I don't know. Oh, okay, awesome. All right. Hallo, goed morgen. Um, bedankt allemaal. Uh, leuk dat jullie zijn. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, thank you, everyone. Nice to have you here. So let's move from Dutch uh, to Swift. It's much easier, trust me. Um, Swift, your personal website using Publish. So iOS developers are not only iOS developers, right? Uh, we make apps for, for uh, TV, uh, for uh, watch of, um, uh, smartphones, for, um, uh, for watches, uh, for, for a lot of different uh, hardware. Um, we could be called Swift developers, right? But not only that, we can also write uh, websites. And I'll tell you all uh, about it, but let's start uh, a little bit about me first. So as uh, Jeroen already said, uh, I was a civil engineer for two years, and then I decided to switch to programming, a completely different, different uh, career, and became an iOS developer. Uh, I'm also a Croatian, and I live in Canada, in Toronto. Uh, I work as an iOS developer in a company called Ballis Interactive, and I write articles for uh, Codeco, uh, which is the new Ray Vendelli, we just recently rebranded, and also uh, I mentor a cohort of uh, bootcamp students um, for Codeco. Um, okay, so let's say that you've decided you wanna build a website, be that your personal website, or um, you wanna show off your portfolio, start writing blogs, or uh, just just um, for, for pretty much anything. So you have to you have to decide um, what type of website you want to build. Now you have a few options here, uh, so let's just um, go go quickly through all of them. So you can decide to build a static website or a dynamic website. Now static websites are websites that are served uh, to the client in the form of static HTML files. So they are already stored somewhere and just waiting to be displayed for you. There's no calculation being done on them, which makes them a little bit faster to be displayed. When the server navigates to a certain website that is static website, the corresponding HTML file is being found and then displayed uh, to you, to the user. So these files are already read, uh, ready to be sent and they don't require a lot of computing power. Static websites um, are um, built uh, using static site generators. Um, you can write all of the HTML by yourself, but you, it's much easier to uh, use the static site generator. And it's a tool that generates a full static HTML website based on raw data and a set of templates. And it will automate the task of coding HTML files for you so you don't have to write them manually by yourself. So while I was researching static websites a little bit, um, I found something called Jamstack. And um, static site generators are usually part of something called Jamstack, which is uh, a web development approach. Uh, it's a group of technologies, JavaScript, uh, APIs, and markup, uh, that all work together to make the development uh, process easier. And, and why is it important? Why do I mention it? It's because without it, we wouldn't have the vibrant uh, static site generation system that we have uh, today. Um, and on, on jamstack.org website, you can actually find a list and filter all the static site generators that are out there. Um, it's, uh, you can't really see it here, but uh, there are 347 generators listed on Jamstack uh, website, which is a lot, uh, enough to overwhelm anyone. So the one that are most popular here, you can see next, uh, JS, Hugo, Hugo is a uh, very popular, uh, Jekyll as well, Jekyll is what GitHub pages uses, uh, Slate, Hexo, there's also a, a lot of the Gatsby. Um, and then on the other side, we have dynamic websites. Dynamic websites are generated dynamically, as the word suggests. Uh, the result is still the same HTML code as you get with the static websites, but the work required by the server is much more demanding. So it includes gathering HTML, gathering and processing of data, and much more. And this happens every time the client visits uh, a website. For example, we have uh, Bob in uh, visiting, um, searching for something on the Google, and he visits a website, and this website is static. So he gets um, 
the data immediately, so there's no calculation being done. But what's good about uh, dynamic websites is um, you can also present different types of content in your uh, website uh, if the user is based in, I don't know, in the States or like or Netherlands or Australia, for example, if it's, or if it's Christmas in China, you can present uh, like uh, Christmas content and different content based on the user location, uh, based, based on different things. So that's kind of one of the good things about dynamic websites. They are a little bit slower, but these days with the computing power we have, that's barely noticeable really. And uh, dynamic websites are built with a CMS or content management system. And uh, you probably heard about Ghost or WordPress, which is one of the most popular ones, uh, Netlify or Webflow, Wix. These are all content management uh, systems that you can use to create a dynamic website. So I won't go uh, over in details uh, about all of the advantages or disadvantages. It's pretty much what, uh, what you like more, whether you like uh, dabbling more with static websites or dynamic. Uh, dynamic are a little bit easier to build, I guess, because like in WordPress, if you ever use WordPress or, or any of the CMS, uh, everything is already there. You just have to build your website. But when it comes to static, you have to work a little bit more. But also um, another good thing about dynamic websites is if you want to integrate any plugins, um, it's much easier because it's already out there. When it comes to static websites, you have to usually integrate some third-party uh, libraries to, to make it all available on your website. So static uh, website. Publish is a static uh, website, and Publish is actually a static site generator that uh, you can build your static website with it. Uh, it's, it's publicly available on GitHub, um, and you can import it as a Swift package uh, through Swift Package Manager in Xcode. It's built by Swift. It's built by uh, John Sandell. Uh, he built Swift by Sandell entirely on Publish. Uh, most of you have probably visited his website. It's, it's very fast and it's really cool. Uh, and you can see what Publish uh, ha can do. So um, websites are pretty much Swift packages. Um, you can start as simple and customize when needed. Um, pretty much uh, the world is your canvas. So Xcode is your canvas. What, anything you can think of, you can do. Uh, it does require a lot of code and a lot of uh, tinkering with it. Um, you can create UI elements or like HTML elements um, in Markdown or programmatically, and uh, you can also integrate existing or build your own plugins um, to add some additional things that are not included in, in Publish. Now, Publish is based on pretty much two most important packages that 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 that. that they are basically publish. Um, one of them is Plot. Uh, Plot is a DSL for writing type safe HTML, XML, or RSS in Swift. Uh, you can build website documents and feeds with it. It's integrated into Publish, but you can import it in your project uh, as a separate package. Its primary focus is on uh, Swift-based uh, web development, and it's again built uh, by Sandel. Uh, it has a wide coverage of HTML5 uh, standard. Uh, it has a component protocol that you can use uh, to build a Swift UI-like um, uh, UI, uh, which I'll show you a little bit later. So this is kind of how you would create an HTML um, in, in plot. Uh, it's, it looks like Swift, Swift, uh, Swift code, right? So. Uh, you define uh, a constant here called HTML and this uh, type HTML. You define the head of the HTML with a title uh, and the style sheet. So any styling is done in CSS. So you kind of have to understand or know CSS. Uh, it's not that complicated, but you can pretty much Google anything. But it's, it's good to understand the basic of HTML and CSS when you're working with Publish. It will help you a lot. And also body, uh, you can add, uh, so as you see, we have like an H1, which is a title uh, paragraph, and it, but let's take a look at this head here. So this is how you would write a component in plot. And this is how plot would generate uh, this, that code into this uh, HTML. 
And if you take a look, this is the head that we defined earlier. And apart from the title that we defined and the uh, link to the styles that CSS file, uh, it also adds some additional things that you don't have to add yourself. For example, we have the Twitter title. So if you share your, uh, your website or your blog post from your website on Twitter, uh, it will have this title already de defined. Okay, so let's take a look at, at how would you create a site footer. Um, you create uh, a struct called site footer or anything. Uh, it's of type component. And then you define the body of that component. So it looks very SwiftUI like, right? We have a body as well in SwiftUI. And Sundell made it uh, like this on purpose. He wanted be people to be very familiar, like the, the style of writing this code, uh, to be very like SwiftUI like. So you define the, the footer here, uh, body, uh, the footer. Uh, and then inside the footer, you have uh, paragraphs. Uh, you also have text. So if you take a look at this text here, it's pretty much the same way as you would write in Swift, Swift UI. And then also, if you see, there are additional modifiers. So just like Swift UI modifiers, uh, these modifiers add uh, a link target that blank. So um, when you t click on a link on your website, it opens in a new tab. And there are different, different modifiers that you can apply um, to, to, to any component, pretty much. And this is how this would render. Uh, this is from my website, um, with a little bit of CSS styling, of course. Another package uh, that publishes based on is Ink. And it's a, it's a markdown parser written in Swift, again, uh, written by Sundell. Uh, it converts markdown formatted strings into HTML. So you can write uh, your blog post or content for your published website uh, in Markdown. So you don't have to do it programmatically, you can also do it in Markdown. Also, primary focus is on Swift based web development um, and it's highly customizable. So, this is how an article uh, would look like in Markdown. Uh, on the top, there's some metadata that you can add, like date, description, image, tags, um, and ink uses all of that and you can display nicely on your website depending how you style your website. Pure markdown um, with a little bit of magic. It can look like this. Um, pretty much how you want to style it. It's pretty cool. So foundation theme is the default theme that Publish is built with. Now theme is the way you create or, or create your UI components or HTML elements um, for your website. If you create uh, a publish or instantiate for the first time uh, and run the website that it's built with, uh, this is how it looks like. This is the default foundation theme. It's pretty basic, but with a little bit of adjustment, you can, you can have a up and running website in, in no time. You don't have to add much styling to this. It's, um, it's made for writing blogs. Pretty much you can see in here, we have my first post with tags and description and everything. Uh, just with this, you can have an up and running website. With a, bit, a little bit of uh, CSS styling and maybe um, change in the foundation theme uh, yourself, you can have something like this. It also supports dark mode and light mode automatically based on your system uh, settings on your uh, computer. Now you can create your own custom theme. Um, when you import publish in your Xcode or just create a, a publish package, uh, you have all of these dependencies. So let's take a look at the publish uh, right here. Now, eagle-eyed among you will notice this uh, bug fizz update macOS version uh, <laughs> branch. One of the issues with publish is um, while, while John did uh, create uh, Swift with Sandel with, with publish and he's trying his best to update it regularly. Sometimes he doesn't do it. And when you have uh, your website there and you want to do something and he doesn't do it, uh, you kind of have to go in there and fix things. So I forked <laughs> his, um, the, the plugin here that, that's created and created a branch uh, just to update the, the macOS version in the package itself. So, I, so my, my website built uh, another issue here, but yeah. Um, that's, that's the thing with static websites. 
So in the publish um, itself, let's take a look at this theme plus foundation extension. So it's an extension on the theme, and this is how you define or create your theme. This is how the foundation theme is created. Uh, so it's just a static variable, um, and then you create a theme, you define the HTML factory, and you define the resource to your CSS file. The HTML factory is um, a factory for your HTML. It's how you create your HTML components. That is what theme is made of. So HTML factory, let's take a look at it. Um, if we go a little bit up and take a look at HTML factory, this is how it looks like. Uh, foundation HTML factory is, is a struct of type HTML factory. Uh, conforms to HTML factory protocol and it has uh, these uh, a few um, methods that you can implement. Uh, one of them is make index HTML, which is to create how your index, uh, your home page is going to look like. So you define this HTML, uh, you can create some like language, you can define the language, uh, your published website can be in different languages as well, which is cool. Uh, you create a head and then inside the body you create all your components. So in here we have like a header, uh, a wrapper around like H1 paragraph, pretty much you style it the way you want it. And this is the HTML factory protocol um, with this uh, make index HTML uh, method and it also has a few others. So it has a section HTML and item HTML. Now section HTML is a page that you can navigate to with your navigation. Uh, it took me a while actually to figure that out. So you can create a section and a page. A page is a, a website that you cannot navigate with navigation. So if you want to link to somewhere else, not necessarily have it in the navigation uh, bar, that's a page. And then item would be like a blog post. And then you also have two optional, uh, which is a tag list and tag details. That is how you define uh, or create your HTML for your published website. So let's take a little bit uh, inside Xcode and how this, how it all looks like. So when you create a package that's Swift for your website, um, it has like few different uh, major folders that all of the content or everything is sorted in. So one of them is content. Uh, content is where your blog posts pretty much live. You can also add like a hierarchy, uh, sort them in different uh, folders based on year, based on month, um, anything you'd like. So you, we have content and then we have output. Output is pretty much where your website is. So when you run uh, or build your website in Xcode, uh, all, every, all of your code from your HTML factory and your theme is gen generated as HTML and put inside output. Uh, folder. Uh, it also generates in here, if you see a uh, feed, a sitemap, uh, there's a style CSS file index, and all your um, navigation uh, sections and then pages. So if you take uh, everything from output and put it somewhere else, this is pretty much your website. You can store it anywhere you'd like. Then we have resources. This is where your custom fonts, images, uh, and also CSS file uh, are stored in. And then the main part, we have sources, uh, just like any package if you work with Swift Package Manager. This is your, your code base. Um, so inside here, I have a few constants that I keep, uh, data store, and then HTML factory and main file. So main file is the configuration for your website and you can define different properties, uh, the name of your site, some description. Um, in here, I have defined a section, section ID. So I have post portfolio, uh, which is rendered as speaking or about me um, on website. There's also some metadata that you can add. There's multiple here, uh, like date, description, and tag. This is all on every of my blog posts. I have date, description, and tags. And then, as I already mentioned, a few other properties you can uh, add, the URL of your website, the name, uh, a Twitter card, like do you want it to look large or smaller, um, the path to your images and languages and all different things. And then this is where I've defined my own HTML factory and created my own custom theme. And then pretty much all static websites are generated using build steps, so it's goes from one step to the last one and it's executed step by step. Uh, this is how, how Publish is as well executed. Um, 
It's uh, installing plugins, uh, adding Markdown files, copying resources. Um, it also has a method here to generate RSS feed by, uh, by automatically, you don't have to do anything, uh, sitemap, and it deploys everything on, on GitHub. So let's take a look at how, how you can build, um, build uh, a home page, like an index page. Um, so you define HTML. We already seen this a little bit, but let's take a look, look at the code a bit more closely. So you have the site header here, HTML, and then site header. Um, this is just another uh, like a, a component that you can you know, add here. You define it anywhere you'd like. So this is how, how my header looks like. Um, and we're just going to take a look at the code. So this is the site header of type component. And you would call it just like uh, any Swift UI, like with the body, and then just add your UI components in there. So there's header, and there's a wrapper class uh, that I use as well. And then in here, we have uh, this stop header banner image. So my banner image uh, is a link to my home page. If you click it, it would open my home page. Uh, inside it, I've added an image. Um, and also, if you notice uh, right here, um, there's this accessibility label. Now, with publish, uh, just using publish, not doing anything uh, around accessibility, you can have a perfectly accessible website or perfectly not accessible, ac accessible website. Um, it doesn't have any, you don't have to do anything uh, special to have your website accessible. Uh, if you use UI components that are predefined, uh, for example, like link, image, um, header one, paragraph, text, uh, the screen reader is going to take a look at those HTML components and read them correctly to the user. Also for images, uh, you can add accessi accessibility labels. Um, also for screen readers. That's how you can increase your accessibility. If you use divs, like uh, custom classes, uh, then your website is not going to be as accessible as it can be if you use already defined uh, HTML components. And I have to give credit to Felipe uh, here because she's amazing, because she actually gave me this tip about accessibility. Uh, if you don't know her, she's the one that does all the sketch notes at conferences. Um, so she helped me uh, with these accessibility labels. Then uh, we have the image, and then at, at the bottom, uh, below the image, we have the title, which is just a paragraph, uh, and then the that class, uh, banner title, is the class in CSS I use uh, to style the banner. Then below that, I have the header title, uh, again, paragraph with some class that I can style. And then in below of that, um, I have the, I insert the navigation if there's more than one, if there's less than one, I don't need navigation, right? And this is how, how the header, um, how the header looks like. So Swift by Sandel, uh, built, built in publish as well. Um, you can see what you can do pretty much here. I took a lot of uh, design uh, from, from him. Uh, as well, Stefan's website uh, is also built uh, in Publish, and he actually helped me a little bit with Publish code. Uh, I think it's pretty amazing, pretty well styled. And also, I believe, uh, Leo Dion's uh, website, Bright Digits, this is as well Publish. So you can pretty much, you know, where your crea creativity leads you, uh, you can create anything in Publish. Now, there are a lot of published plugins out there that you can find hosted on GitHub. Um, there are 51 public repositories uh, on published plugins. So there's a plugin that you can automatically calculate the reading time for your article. Uh, there are plugins for, for Twitter. Uh, Splash published plugin is for uh, Swift syntax highlighting uh, made by Sundell. Um, there are other amazing, uh, you can create your own, that, that's great. As I said, in, in, in publish and most static sites, you have to import third-party libraries if you want to add anything additional to your website. Uh, on my website, I decided to write uh, like posts on publish because when I was using publish, uh, I've seen that there's not much documentation around it. Um, 
There is a little bit uh, published on, on, on the GitHub of the publish itself. Not, not a lot. Uh, I still had to like figure a lot of things out. Uh, and that's probably one of the bad sides of publish, I guess. You have to figure a lot of things on your own. It's going to take a lot of time. Um, I found it fun, but if you just want to have something up and running really fast, maybe it's better to use a dynamic website than CMS, uh, which is, to be completely honest, something I'm thinking of switching to. <laughs> yeah, well, you live, you learn, right? I, I remember when they asked Paul Hudson, is his website in Swift? And he said, why? <laughs> Um, so you can on my website you can find a lot of uh, posts on publish uh, because it took me a lot of time to figure things out. I decided to write uh, articles on it to help others. So there's a lot of like you, if you want to create your content markdown or you want to create it programmatically um, or how to deploy your website on GitHub pages. Uh, I, I will publish more posts uh, in the coming uh, weeks but yeah if you want to start you can start right here. Uh, these are a few links. I will have the slides available later so you can take a look. And these are the links to the, some of the things I've mentioned to the Publish Plot Inc. and Jamstack website. Okay, so thank you. Uh, you can find me on, on Twitter uh, or my, my, blog, my personal website, uh, daniellaverzen.com. And one more thing before uh, we, we, we finish. Uh, so I love to... Um, do giveaways. Uh, it's one of the amazing things as uh, as being part of the Ray Vanderly or Codeco team is I can do cool stuff like this, like this, and I love to uh, make someone happy. So I want to give away two books that I chose uh, from their website. Uh, Modern Concurrency in Swift is our most popular book written by Martin Todorov. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing, uh, it's, it's up to date, it's written on the modern concurrency. Um, and then another book that I personally love and I always bring with me uh, when I go to conferences is Living by the Code. It's a book written like an interview sort of style where they interviewed a few people in the industry uh, on their tips on iOS development, career tips, pretty much anything. The book is actually much bigger than the modern concurrency. And it's pretty cool uh, if you're interested. Uh, I have this QR code. Um, if anyone is interested, uh, scan this QR code. The, the giveaway is on Gleam. So I hope everything goes right because this is my first time using Gleam. Um, you just have to sign in with your name and email. You get one point for that. And if you uh, um, add my website to your RSS feeds, you get two. Uh, yeah, so go ahead, uh, enter if you're interested, and I will choose winners a little bit later. The, this is open until noon today, so 12, 12 p.m. Um, and yeah, that, that's all for me. So anybody have any questions for Daniela? Please have a lot, because uh, I'm trying to find two of my speakers. <laughs> um, take cover there. Yeah, I, I know. I, I will hit you in the face. It, it, it needs to go over you. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can. <clears throat> Is there any uh, open sourced mm. sites that we can take inspire of? Like maybe your site is open sourced, or someone else has an open source project so we can check. Uh, yeah, uh, my site is currently not open source. Uh, I will open source it a little bit later. Uh, but I think Stefan's website is open source. Uh, I can also add the link, maybe I should have done that, a link to a few websites that I know are in publish uh, when I uh, give people out slides so you can take a look as well. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Um. I have one question about the previews. So I have seen that there's uh, previews available. So those previews are inside the Xcode, or you, the, the website is built it and you see on the on the browser. So how does the previews are look like? Yeah, you can't use SwiftUI previews, obviously. Uh, but uh, one one way that I find you can preview your website uh, when you 
you can run the, uh, so Publish actually comes with like a local server host that you can run your website in. So, uh, and then you can run that like local host uh, slash 800. Uh, then you run the uh, Xcode uh, to generate the HTML files. And then you can just preview it in your browser. Uh, I always have the developer tools open because it caches the website and it doesn't like automatically refresh. So when you have the cache turned off in the developer tools uh, in Safari or Chrome or any uh, web browser that you use, you can almost automatically preview uh, any changes you make. I've noticed that your website looks pretty neat. And I assume it requires some knowledge of CSS. Is there any plan to support the Swift CSS conversion to regular CSS from the Swift code? Um, I think you can use different CSSs. Like that's not really, I'm not very a lot familiar with how it works. Uh, I think a lot of people are using ta Tailwind CSS. Uh, because they are they they prefer it you can i think you can write css code much easier than like just regular css uh, but yeah you 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 kind of have to know css i mean you can find it all online it's it's not rocket science but yeah it's good yeah that that would be nice I, uh, that is not supported currently yeah hi thanks for the presentation can you hear me yeah um so you already mentioned that you are stepping away from it, probably. Not a glowing review, but uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you would step away from this in the future. It's obviously quite new, and it's still like, do you use this forever, or do you want to use something else? How easy would it be to content? Like, if, if you write it all in Markdown, would that make it easier to use other static site generators? this tool? Yeah, so I, I honestly, personally, I haven't used other static site generator. Uh, so I'm not very much familiar with how others work. I guess there are some that also work with Markdown. Uh, but because this is like Swift code, um, I don't think it would be <laughs> easier to switch to any other static sites. Uh, but especially, I was personally thinking of moving to a content management system, something like, like WordPress or Webflow or Squarespace, because it's just much easier to set everything up. I have to do a lot of work to like publish and everything, and it's just, you know, uh, time is precious in our industry, right? right. Oh, uh, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was wondering if you could integrate this in uh, an iOS app, for example, and then run your HTML in a web view. I don't know why you would want that, but just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Fair question. Uh, Publish is, uh, is a package. Uh, you can import it in your, in your iOS project, uh, I would think. I've never personally done that, but uh, just as you would uh, import any other Swift package, you can also import it and then... I don't know. If you build something like that, uh, like send it to me. I want to see it. <laughs> okay, thank you. No more questions? Okay. Nobody else? Oh, there's one. Yeah, I'll just project my website. Um, <laughs> so I just wonder, like, how well supported is this device in general? Because, like you said, you made a fork of the operating system version to a lot of support. Um, how often? Yeah, the, the biggest issue I had is with, uh, that was actually a plugin that wasn't updated to, to new macOS version. Um, gave me a headache to figure out what was happening. Uh, so it's like any third party library, right? You kind of have to rely on the developer to update it. Um, it, is, it is well supported, but you can also do a lot of things yourself. It just takes a lot more time if you don't want to be dependent on a third party library or like a plugin. Uh, but it's, um, there's even more and more people using Publish. Uh, it might become much better in the future. And John is like one person, one man band. He's doing everything, so I can't really blame him. Uh, he's doing the best job he can. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping in the future it might become more more stable and uh, much more supported. Oh. Another question? Yes, I'm very time. happy with questions right now. Sorry, Daniela. That's okay. Hi. Uh, my question is, on one, one of your slides there was a line responsible for the website de deployment. Uh, I was thinking if you can elaborate more on that, for example, what kind of deployments are supported and uh, how often does it happen? Like it happens every time you run the application or some, something else? Yeah, so um, the deployment only runs. So when you when you when you create when you install publish, um, you install it through Make. So it already has some command line tools that you can like use. So if you don't incorporate anything custom uh, to deploy your website, you just have to run deploy publish uh, on your command line, and that's when when it executes the steps and publishes the website. I think right now. It's only um, supported for, for GitHub. Uh, it has that, as you've seen, that method to, for, for GitHub deployment. So you can just add it. But you can also deploy it, I think, uh, with a little bit of more work on any other um, uh, hosting service that you'd like. All right. Um, if there's no further questions, then. Uh